Hello everyone. I'm Tommy. Uh, I'm the course tutor for this ACC F9 course. Here is the first class, so um, welcome all of you joining our class. Here's the agenda for the class today. First of all, the introduction. Um, as we share in our introduction video, uh, I hope um, you watch it. Uh, we first, okay, we would like to introduce the concept of the capital investment appraisal because we think it's very important in the ACCA F9 exam. Um, so it, the first part is to introduce the capital investment appraisal and um, then is the non-DCF methods. Okay, uh, in the capital investment appraisal, we have non-DCF methods. Uh, this DCF means discount cash flow. We have non-DCF methods and also have DCF methods. And most important is about NPV, net present value, okay, which is the most important concept in the capital investment appraisal um, topic. So we have um, a lot of coverage on the NPV. And the last part is a summary of our class today. So um, capital investment appraisal. For capital investment, okay, um, before start, okay, uh, just introduce our methodology. Okay, you can see it um, on the top right hand corner here, I circle in, in red. This is number two. Okay, it means the course note number, page number two. Okay, you can refer to page number two uh, for, for these slides. Okay, if you, for example, um, you, you, are, you, you, you are afraid of missing any parts of our um, lecture in the video, then you can just refer to the top right hand corner so that you can see uh, which pages of the course note that we are referring to. Okay, first of all, okay, capital investment. What is, cap what is capital investment? Capital investment is the key element in financial management and a thorough understanding of techniques of investment appraisal. Okay, investment appraisal is very important, as I said. So how is it important? Um, we have a lot of methods to appraise or evaluate uh, and investment opportunities. For example, we have non-discount cash flow methods. Uh, in the ACC F9 syllabus, we introduce payback and ARR. Okay, what is ARR? The accounting rate of return. Okay, accounting rate of return. And for discount cash flow methods, okay, um, you have to remember, no matter if you pick F9 exam or you think uh, you pass F9 exam and then you think you would like to have more challenges, uh, you would like to accept more challenges in investment appraisal, then you have to go to P4. In P4, you will see again your your friends, MPV and IRR. MPV stands for net present value. And IRR stands for internal rate. Of return. Okay, so MPV, IRR. These are discount cash flow methods. So, why? MPV is the best. Okay, a lot of textbook saying MPV is the best. And why? In this lecture, in this class, we will explain step by step so you will, un you will finally can find the answer why MPV is the best among all investment appraisal techniques. Okay, but in commercial world, MPV is not the only one that uh, the people or the financial professional will apply. Okay, they are still applying payback or uh, Accounting rate of return or N or IRR. Okay, next topic: accounting rate of return. What is accounting rate of return? Okay, generally the equation here showing the relationship between uh, profit and capital. Uh, this is the formula, what we call ARR, the accounting rate of return. So what is the profit? What does profit mean? Profit can be accounting profit. Okay, 
So what is accounting profit? Maybe, for example, net profit after tax, or I call it NPAC, net profit after tax, or EBIT, earning before interest and tax. So which profit figures that I should apply in this formula? Okay, it's not clear in this simple um, method. Also capital, what is capital? What does capital mean? Okay, capital can mean, for example, shareholder funds, okay, or capital can mean total assets, maybe, okay. All these figures, share, no matter shareholder funds or total assets, where are they from? More or where can you find the numbers? They are from balance sheet or financial statement, right? So here we have profit, the accounting profit. We have the capital, for example, maybe shareholder funds, more maybe total assets, they are from the balance sheet. So here, for accounting rate of return, all these figures you can check from the financial statements, the published account, the published account. So, as I said, okay, what is that profit? What is capital? Okay, I just mentioned uh, two definitions of profit and also two definitions of capital. So it's a weakness definition of profit and capital. It's not clear. And if measuring management performance, okay, we usually, or the market usually apply the ratios called ROCE, return on capital employed. Um, here I would like to make a star here because in the ACCA F9 exam, um, some questions are asking the candidates or the students um, to calculate the ROCE or to, um, to assess the ROCE, okay, return on capital employed. So here's the first star that I will mark here. You have to remember ROCE, return on capital employed, and what does it mean? If it is measuring management performance, the formula will be here. Profit before interest of tax divided by average capital employed. And for the capital employed, okay, here we have two um or two definitions here. Okay, first first definition, okay, for capital employed is total asset minus current liabilities okay the total assets minus current liabilities is the total average capital employee average mean for example you take three years average or two years average Okay, but how the capital employed uh, refer, refer, refer to is the total assets minus cap current liabilities. Or the second definition here for capital employed is shareholder funds plus long term debt. Okay, shareholder funds plus long-term debt. Okay, either one is also good. Okay, uh, here's, uh, I cannot say it's official uh, definitions of capital employed, but if we, you refer to textbook published by the uh, by the official uh, publisher, okay, they refer to capital employed, okay, two definitions. One is total assets minus current liabilities. The other one is shareholder funds plus long-term debt. Okay, they, are, they come to the same numbers. They come to the same numbers. Okay, here it is with um, the formula for return on capital employed profit before interest and tax divided by the average capital employed. 
and if. Okay. Yes, mentioned here. Okay. Just mentioned to, rep to recap, the capital employee is total assets less current liabilities or shareholder funds plus long term liabilities. Okay, remember this formula first. Okay. Um, okay, to, to explain, okay, capital, capital. Okay, what does it mean, capital? It's the uh, investor investing in the companies. Okay, the money that investor investing in the companies. Investors means. Okay, well, let me cross it. Okay, investors lower uh, right here. Okay, it may be more clear. Okay, a lot of investors, but in general, investors two types. The first is the shareholders. Okay, the other investors are banks or debt holders. Okay, let me explain a bit detail on it. If you remember, the profit figures here, we are using the profit before interest and tax. So it's the money, it's the money that will give out to two parties. The first part is about the interest, okay, to who? To the bank or the debt holders, okay? And the next part is about the, the, uh, the profit after interest, okay? If any residual, any residual after taking out the interest to the debt holders or banks and paying the tax, then the residuals will be paid as dividends to shareholders, right? It's a dividend. So two parts, okay, interest paying to the bank, debt holders, and the other part is dividend paying to shareholders. So what the capital that we are, we are referring to, the capital means the money from shareholders and the banks, okay? I hope it's clear for you, all of you, why you, we these definitions to measure management performance, because a company's management, okay, they make money, for the company to make money, and the money will pay the interest to the debt holders, and also pay to the um, capital funding from the shareholders. Okay, so I hope at this part, at this part, I, th I hope all of you are clear why we, the ROCG, the formula is coming from uh, on. Okay, why? Okay, why? Because the people would like to ask you why the profit before interest and tax. Okay, not net profit after tax. Okay, because if you take net profit after tax, it 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 does mean you don't consider any banks or debt holders in your in, in, in your in your capital part. Okay. But next formula that we are talking is if we only measure the shareholders return. Okay. If we only measure the shareholders return, this ratio will change. This ratio will change. We no more we no more take care about the interest because we take out the, the interest to the banks. We only measure the shareholders' return. And in this part, we consider net profit after tax. We consider net profit after tax divided by shareholder equities. Again, all these figures are coming from where? Financial statement. Right? All these are coming from financial statements. Okay, that's an example. That's an easy example. Okay, um, the example is showing um, the accounting rate of return method. Okay, we need to calculate the ROCD using the average profit divided by initial capital or average capital. So, I'd like to explain to you. Okay, uh, you read the question now. Okay, you can pause. You can pause uh, on your screen, and then once you read through the questions and clear, then you can play again.
Okay, welcome back. I think you read through the questions and clear what are required in these questions. Uh, we need to calculate the ROCE using average profit. Okay, uh, we, we are given two methods that we have to use. One is the initial capital, the other is the average capital. First of all, we need to find out the, what um, the formula, okay, because we are using the average profit. So what is the profit? Okay, what is the profit? We can see in in the questions, okay, um, let me go back to the questions. We can see the projects require initial capital expenditure of $10,000 with 3000 of working capital. Okay, and the project has four year lives. It's assumed that the working capital will be fully recovered, so there's three thousand. <coughs> excuse me. So that three thousand of working capital will be fully recovered, and the project has a scrap value of two thousand. Okay, so it means there's a depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash item, but it is deducted from the profit. So we, if we have the net cash flow, for example, 4,000 in the first year, but we have the depreciation. We have the depreciation, and then we have the net profit after depreciation. Okay, so we have to find out the depreciation first. Then we can get the profit figures. Next part is about the capital. Okay, we we have the initial capital requirement. We have the average capital requirement. Okay. So let me do the first part, the initial in capital. Um, Calculation first. Okay, profit. As we said, okay, the profit we have to pick uh, to pick out from a depreciation from the net cash flow. We have the depreciation. How to get that? We have the cost. Which is ten thousand. And we also go scrap value. Scrap value is two thousand. Okay. So it means Eight thousand and project life is four year using the straight line method divided by four. So every year we have two thousand depreciation. We have two thousand depreciation. And we can draw uh, the table showing the profits. Okay. For each year, the net cash flow and net profits. First year, we have 4,000. Net cash flow. Second year we have six thousand net cash flow, and third year is five thousand three hundred. Fourth year is one thousand five hundred. Because we have two thousand depreciation each year on a straight line method. Okay, so in the first year it means a profit two thousand. Next year four thousand, and three thousand five hundred minus two thousand means. 1,500, and the last year, is negative. Okay, minus 500. So, next, is how to get the 
accounting rate of return or the return on capital employed. Average profit here. is one thousand seven hundred fifty and divided by initial capital which is ten thousand plus how much the working capital initial working capital the question uh, uh, gives, gives you is three thousand right ten thousand plus three thousand so here is the formula showing how to get the accounting rate of return or the ROCE based on the initial capital method so it means Thirteen point five percent. Thirteen point five percent is the accounting rate of return or return on capital employed. They to use the initial capital as a calculation. Okay, I hope it's clear about how to get the numbers for this. And if based on the average capital. Okay, we got the average profit is 1750 So right now is we going to average capital. We got 1750 And what is the average capital? Okay. The average capital Is the opening capital cost is which is ten thousand plus the residual value is two thousand, okay, divided by two means six thousand, okay. Remember the working capital three thousand, okay, will be um, will be also included even. It is fully recovered because we are talking about average capital. Okay, closing capital is two thousand because it is scrap value. Opening capital is the cost ten thousand. So the average capital of fixed capital here, the fixed capital is six thousand. So here we got. One thousand seven hundred fifty divided by six thousand plus three thousand dollars. So we got nineteen point four percent. Okay, so let's review for this non DCF method accounting rate of return illustration. We share with you um, the question provides the net cash flow information to you so you have to get the depreciation numbers to come out net profit okay to get the average profit and then you can um, get the initial capital numbers which is 10,000 plus 3,000 okay so here the number is clear 13.3 percent 13.5% based on the initial capital and based on average capital is 19.4% Okay, so after the illustration, what do you think? Accounting rate of return or return on capital employed um, seems it's not well defined. Okay, it's, it's not well defined. I can use that figures or that numbers and then to get the numbers. For example, if I use the initial uh, cost or initial capital, it comes to 13.5%. But if I use the average capital, it can go comes up uh, to almost 20%. So I can manage numbers. So what's the weakness of ARR here? 
first of all, okay, ARR is ignoring the cost of capital tie up in the project because it's not a discount it's not a discounting cash flow method. And the use of profit in decision making include a lot of irrelevant costs such as depreciation. Okay, remember depreciation and general fixed costs but ignore opportunity costs. And profit is always subject to accounting manipulation. Remember, in the exam, a lot of multiple choice questions relevant to investment appraisal. They will ask you for non discount through methods, what's the weakness or what's the um, drawbacks of non discount through methods. Okay, it's about the profits. It's always subject to accounting manipulation. The example I share with you, okay, is not teaching you how to get the numbers correctly or not. The most important concept that I would like to share is to share with you this profit is always subject to accounting manipulation under non DCF methods like ROCE, the return on capital employed. But why ROCE or accounting rate of return is still commonly used? Here you think. Because published accounts because of published accounts. Uh, it's quite easy for the people to understand what where the numbers are from. Okay. Um, also, because the managers can ma manipulate the numbers accounting figures easily. Okay. Um, if the manager's performance or the incentives are highly related to the ROCE or accounting rate of return, they, they are intent, okay, they intend to make the numbers look good because they can get more bonus based on the ROCE when they when it's achieved. Okay. So in the in in the view in from the point of view of the managers, they would like to use um those non DCM methods as a performance measurements. 